Hello students, I hope all of you are safe at home. We are going to continue with the first chapter, Food We Eat. And today's video is on the importance of the balanced diet. Importance of a Now first we need to understand what is a diet. Diet is the food we eat. Diet is the food we eat. Now in my last video we have learned about the different nutrients that our body needs to be strong and healthy. I'm sure you remember them. They are carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals. Now our body requires all these to be strong and healthy. So what is a balanced diet? A balanced diet is a diet that contains all these five nutrients in the correct proportion. All these five nutrients in the correct proportion. So the definition for a balanced diet is a diet that contains all the nutrients in the correct proportion. Now to understand what is the correct proportion, we need to look at the food pyramid. You can open your textbooks to page number 17. We have the food pyramid at the top of the page. Now the food pyramid is divided into four parts. Now if you look at your textbook, at the bottom of the pyramid we have food that is rich in carbohydrates, that is cereals. Now the food that is at the bottom of the pyramid has to be eaten in greater amount than the food that is at the top of the pyramid. So what food contains cereals? What food is made of cereals? You have dosas, bread, chapati, all this comes from cereals. Growing children need to eat food rich in carbohydrates. Why? Because carbohydrates gives you energy. Next we have vegetables and fruits. Now vegetables and fruits need to be eaten in a good amount. Why? Vegetables and fruits are protective food. They protect us from different diseases. Next we have milk. Milk and milk products like curds, then cheese, milk, meat, fish, pulses, 
these food items have to be eaten in moderate amount. Now milk remember is called a complete food. Milk is called complete food. Why is it called complete food? Because it gives us all the five nutrients. Milk has carbohydrates, fats, uh, proteins, vitamins and minerals. So it is a complete food. Now at the top, at the peak of the pyramid where it is very narrow, here you have food that contains a lot of sugar, salt and this food is very high in calories. If you look at the picture on your textbook you can see there ice cream, there's chocolate, there are chips, there is cola. All these foods have to be eaten in little amount. Now we come to junk food. What is junk food? Food that is high in sugar and high in salt is not very good for us. It has very low nutritional value. So we have to try and eat very little of it. I know it's difficult to resist but you can treat yourself with it once in a way. Now that you have understood the proportion of food that is required for a balanced diet, let us go to the next part that is taking care of food. You know that food is our basic need. Food is what keeps us strong and healthy. So we need to take care of food. How are we going to take care of food? Let us see. We need to take care of food. How? Do not waste food. In order to take care of food, we must not, we should not waste food. Now, how can we not waste food? Number one, we should serve ourselves with small portions of food. Just because we see a lot of food on the table doesn't mean that we fill up our, our plate to the brim and then we cannot finish what is in our plate. So what do we do? It lends into the dustbin. Always remember that India has got so many children who go to bed hungry. They are not as lucky as you are. You get three meals a day but some children are not as lucky as you so we should not waste food. We can always take a second helping. Number two, food has to be preserved. Now what is preserving food? There is some food that gets spoiled. So such food has to be preserved. Now how do we preserve food? Now during this uh, lockdown period your parents must have bought a lot of fish when it was available, maybe meat, so what is done with this? Did mummy buy it and leave it on the kitchen counter? No. She put it into the freezer. Why is it put into the freezer? So that it can be kept for a longer time. Now, there are salt can be used as a preservative, sugar can be used as a preservative, vinegar can be used as a preservative, oil also can be used as a preservative. There are some chemicals that are also used as preservatives. One of them is sodium benzoate. Next is putting food into airtight containers, especially dry food. Whenever you open a packet of biscuits and you cannot finish the whole packet of biscuits, what do you do? Do you leave it on the dining table for the next day? No, you put it into an airtight container. Similarly, the ingredients in your kitchen like spices or dals, your mom puts them in airtight containers to keep them from getting spoiled. Next, we come to perishable foods. 
what are perishable foods foods that get spoiled easily such as milk products then vegetables fruits these are called perishable fru uh, foods these foods need to be consumed prior non prior to non perishable foods like uh, nuts grains these do not get spoiled easily or soon so we should consume the perishable ones first so this is how we can take care of food now if you have uh, seen the food pyramid you see there that most of the food comes from plants so it's very important to take care of plants grow more and more plants with this i complete the lesson now what i want you to do is read this lesson at least two to three times there are some difficult words in the lesson which you need to learn to spell for example if you open your uh, textbooks to page 14 some of the difficult words that you need to spell are nutrients then carbohydrates proteins vitamins minerals uh, page 15 you need to spell you need to learn to spell calcium sodium potassium iodine obesity roughage perishable these are some of the difficult words that you need to learn to spell now on your notebook on the first page you will be writing the name of this lesson and then turn to 18 page 18 of your textbook now there are keywords you can copy these keywords with the meanings and then write the points which are there at the bottom of the page under let's revise leave a line after every point read this at least three times in my next video we shall discuss the exercises at the end of the textbook i hope you have understood this lesson well you can try uh, doing exercise a b on page 19 on the textbook itself i'll write it on the board Nineteen and twenty one to be done on the textbook. That is exercise A and B on page nineteen and exercise G on page twenty one. Thank you children.